Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the channel. The final monument of the season brought the conclusion of the 2021 World Tour calendar for this year. And the calendar was actually made up of 29 races, which included all the three Grand Tours, five monuments and plenty of one week long stage races. Unfortunately, a few of the races were cancelled. So this meant that the World Tour didn't actually visit some of the planned places such as Australasia or North America, which were scheduled. And of course, the World Tour doesn't actually feature any races in South America or Africa, but hopefully that will change in the future. Anyways, in today's video, we'll go through the 10 riders who accumulated the most points over these World Tour events and were the highest achievers. And of course, the World Tour rankings only include World Tour races. So unfortunately, the Olympics and the World Championships are not part of that. So anyways, first on our list, we have the rider who silenced the second world with many amazing performances this year. And that was, of course, Matej Morohic. The Slovenian road race champion had a solid beginning to the year with an 11th place in Milan San Remo, 9th in Amstel Gold and 10th in Liège, Baston Liège. In the Tour de France, Morohic took two stage wins, one on stage seven into Le Crozo, incidentally also the longest stage of the tour and stage 19 from a breakaway. He also managed to go on to finish second in the San Sebastian Classic behind Nelson Paulus and second in the Tour of Poland. He had another second place finish overall in the Benelux Tour, which he neatly capped off by winning the final stage. The next rider on our list is the Portuguese star, Joao Almeida, who completed his second year on the World Tour, hoping to emulate his incredible 2020 Giro d'Italia performance. He began the year with a solid podium at the UAE Tour, then a sixth place in Terreno Adriatico, before a seventh place in Vuelta a Catalunya. In the Giro d'Italia, however, there was a bit of trouble in the first week and he finished sixth overall after that first rough start and some inter-team complications with Bremco Evenepoel. However, Almeida's season really ramped up in the second half where he managed to take his first World Tour win on stage two of the Tour of Poland and then follow that up by his second on stage five, including the overall win in the end of the stage race. And that was his last World Tour success of the season. Coming in at number eight, we have Richard Carapaz who had an incredible 2020 season, so it would be a big ask for him to improve on that, but the newly crowned Olympic champion did that. His first result in the World Tour season was a ninth place finish in La Fleche Vallone, and then he went on to win the overall in the Tour de Suisse, as well as winning stage five before heading to Le Tour. At the Tour de France, Richard Carapaz rose to the challenge and finished third overall after three tough weeks of racing. And he thereby completed his Grand Tour podium hat-trick, finishing on the Giro d'Italia podium, now Tour, and of course the Vuelta España podium he did in 2020. However, in the 2021 Vuelta España, he didn't have the best success and had to abandon after stage 14. Bahrain victorious have been an incredible force in 2021 and the rider next was definitely a solid contribution to that and that was Sonny Cobrelli who is now the European and Italian road race champion in the same season. Cobrelli in the early season managed to finish 8th in Milan San Remo, 4th in Ghent Wevelgem and he won stage 2 of the Tour de Romandie ahead of Paddy Bevan and Mark Hirschi plus a number of other solid performances in that race to win the overall points classification. The next race for Sonny Cobrelli was the Criterium du Dauphiné and here again he won the points classification overall as well as winning stage 3 and finishing 2nd on stage 1, 2 and 5. In the Tour de France he managed to finish 5th on stage 3, 3rd on stage 9 to Tigne, a mountain stage and 2nd on stage 16, another mountain stage. Cobrelli then went on to the Benelux Tour where he finished 2nd on stage 5 before winning stage 6 and then again he was 2nd on the final stage behind his teammate Matej Morohic and thereby Sonny Cobrelli went on to clinch the overall win. His final World Tour race of the season was his most memorable as he managed to win the epic edition of Paro Bay that saw everyone covered in mud and this was incidentally also on his first attempt of riding the race so it has definitely been a whirlwind of a season for the 31 year old superstar from Italy. Egan Bernal is next on our list and he had a very difficult 2020, but in 2021, he showed his old form. His first World Tour race was Strada Bianchi and he managed to clinch the final podium spot on his debut in the race. 
He then went on to finish fourth in Tirreno Adriatico overall before a supreme ride in the Giro d'Italia where he won on stage nine up to Campo de Felice and on stage 16, taking the overall win and the young riders classification to become the first Colombian to have won both the Giro d'Italia and the Tour de France. His final World Tour race of the season was La Vuelta a España, where he managed to finish sixth overall after a few hard weeks of racing, and it was also his debut of the race. Coming in at number five, we have Mathieu van der Poel, who is our only pro continental rider on the list, but the World Cyclocross Champion dropped one place from last year's ranking, unfortunately. Mathieu van der Poel managed to win his first World Tour race day, which was stage one of the UAE tour in some crosswind chaos but had to leave the race a day after because someone in the team caught a certain virus and that was a big shame but Mach van der Poel went on to shock the cycling world with an absolutely outrageous performance in Strada Bianchi and he completely destroyed the field and powered to victory ahead of Julien Philippe and Egan Bernal. Mach van der Poel then went on to win stage 3 and stage 5 in Trenio Adriatico and stage 5 being a very impressive long range attack that managed to hold Tade Pogaccia at bay. Mach van der Poel then went on to finish 5th in Milano San Remo, 3rd in the E3 classic and second in the Tour of Flanders after losing the final sprint to Kespa Eskrain, unfortunately. His next success was in the Tour de Suisse where he went on to win stage two and stage three and in the Tour de France, Mathieu van der Poel managed to win on stage two and thereby take the yellow jersey as well for the first time in his career. His final World Tour race of the season was Paru Bay where he was in the winning move but unfortunately he was not able to capitalize on his position and ultimately was defeated in the sprint and finished third, but this was in his first appearance. Next, we have the now double world champion, Julien Philippe, who improved on his sixth place finish in these rankings last year to jump up to fourth. Julien Philippe began the world tour with a second place finish in Strada Bianca behind Mathieu van der Poel and then went on to the Torino Adriatico where he won on stage two, out sprinting Mathieu van der Poel and Wout Bernard. The world champion then picked up results in the spring classics with a sixth place in Amstel Gold, winning the Flesh Vallon ahead of Primus Roglic and second in Liege, Baston Liege, losing out in the final sprint. Alaphilippe picked up a number of top five positions in the Tour de Suisse, notably second in the time trial behind Rigoberto Ran, before heading to the Tour de France. The world champion lived up to his hype and won on stage one and overtook the yellow jersey. However, this was the height of his Tour de France and there were no more stage victories up for grabs for him. After the tour, Alaphilippe managed to finish sixth in the San Sebastian Classic, second in the Britannia Classic, and concluded his year with a sixth place in Il Lombardia. Now we come into the podium of the list, and on the first step, we have the winner of last year's UCI ranking, who is now our third place finisher, and that is Primoz Roglic. Primoz Roglic had a mixed year in 2021. He looked dominant in Paris Nice, winning stage four, stage six, stage seven, before several crashes on the final stage cost him the overall win and Maximilian Schachmann won it for a second year in a row, unfortunately. Roglic then went on to win the Tour of the Basque Country after winning stage one and a tactical masterclass on stage six to get rid of the threat of Tadej Pogacar. And then he went on to do the Spring Classics where he unfortunately, in La Fleche Vallone, wasn't able to hold off around paging Julian Philippe and had to settle for second place. Primoz Roglic elected not to go to any of the pre- Tour de France stage races and trained in the mountains instead and for the Tour de France where he was looking to seek some redemption for the 2020 defeat he unfortunately wasn't able to do so as he had a number of crashes and bad luck and ultimately he was out of GC contention very quickly and ultimately didn't finish the race and he also went on to defend his Vuelta a España title for another year winning the first and final stages along with stage 11 and 17 and this was an incredible feat and he equaled the record for most wins in a row for the Vuelta a España. Roglic's final World Tour event was Il Lombardia and unfortunately here he was dropped on the final climb from the chasing group and was not in the move 
contesting for the win, but he did, however, manage to get back in contention and sprint for a fourth place finish. Second on our list, we have Wout Van Aert, who was arguably the most all-round rider of the season. The former cyclocross world champion has won flat stages, time trials, cobble classics, and even mountain stages. He began the season with a fourth place finish in Strad Bianchi before winning the opening stage of Terrain Atheragico against pure sprinters. And then the most impressive result was stage four, where he managed to finish ninth of the Pranto de Tibo, which was a mountain stage, beating many elite climbers. Wout Van Aert managed to conclude the stage race by winning the final time trial and finished second overall. Four days later, he went on to finish third in Milan San Remo, then went on to finish 11th in the E3 Saxo Bank Classic before going to Ghent Wevelgem, where he managed to put himself in an unusual breakaway with mostly pure sprinters. But ultimately, Wout Van Aert took the win in front of many of these sprinters. In the Tour of Flanders, he couldn't quite match the power of Kespa Eskain and Macho Van der Poel and rolled into the finish line in sixth place. But that disappointment was soon left behind him as he managed to win the Amstel Gold Race where he pipped the young Tom Pickcock to the top spot of the podium. The Tour de France, however, was the best result for him in the 2021 season as he managed to finish in the top 10 on seven stages. And this also included the stage wins on stage 11, which was a double ascent up to Mont Mont 2, the final time trial as well on stage 20, and of course the final sprint on stage 21 on the iconic Champs-Élysées, also in the process denying Mark Cavendish a record-breaking victory, which Eddie Merckx probably thanked him for. Wout Van Aert finished his world tour with a seventh place finish in the epic edition of Paris-Roubaix as well but what a year he's had for sure. Now we come to number one, and there's no surprise that it is the very young Tadej Pogacar who improves on his second place finish from the UCR rankings from 2020. And in the early part of the season, Pogacar managed to win the UAE Tour, improving on his second place from the 2020 edition, as well as winning Terreno Adriatico in emphatic fashion with that record setting time of the Pranto de Tivo, one of the reasons. Pogacar, also won a stage in the Tour of the Basque Country out sprinting Primoz Roglic, but ultimately finished third after some tactical genius by Primoz Roglic and a blunder from UAE Team Emirates, of course, as well. Tadej Bogaccio also won his first monument in the form of liege bastogne after out sprinting Julien Philippe to take that top spot. Tadej Bogaccio then went to the Tour de France and he actually managed to win it for a second year in a row, picking up three stage wins along the way on stage five, a flat time trial, and stage stage 17 and stage 18 and he was even second on stage two behind Mathieu van der Poel so a solid ride and he picked up the young riders classification polka dot jersey and the yellow jersey once again for the second year in a row. Pogaccia then concluded his world tour season by winning Il Lombardia after attacking with a 36 kilometer attack and ultimately out sprinting Fausto Masnada to become the first rider since Bernardino to win the Tour de France Il Lombardia in the same season so that's it for this video let me know in the comments below who has been your favorite rider of the season and which performance was your favorite and of course make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the things we're doing if you haven't already and of course thank you for watching and have a nice day